everyone. In this video I'm going to be showing you how to properly stack your dog for the show ring. Um, not only properly but how to quickly do it. So before I dive into it though I wanted to explain about three reasons why you really want to practice this and get really good at doing it fast. Um, the first reason is unfortunately a lot of judges don't wait for you to be completely done before they start examining your dog. Um, this can cause a lot of issues uh, if your dog really needs the support um, and they may also not get a proper feel of the structure. So the faster you can stack your dog and have them looking good and have them in your control before the exam starts, the better uh, success or the better the exam is going to be. Uh, the second reason is the faster you can stack your dog, the faster they're going to be looking good for the judge. So when the judge is doing their final um, look of all the exhibitors in the ring, the faster you can stack your dog and making them look good, the better they're going to look in front of the judge. Um, if you're fumbling around and the dog looks weird, the judge might not wait for you to finish and might move on to look at the next one. And then they might not have a good view of your dog in their mind. So it's really important to do it fast so that the judge can have a good look of your dog. The other reason is you're going to be competing against professional handlers if you're competing in AKC and ASCA actually. And they are going to be stacking their dogs super fast. So if you can do it just as fast as them, it will even the playing field. Um, so that's about it. Now we can dive into it. So for the demonstration today, today I have Portia with me. Um, she hasn't been groomed, so don't judge her too hard on that. Um, but the first thing I'm going to show you is how to stack them in the profile view, which is their side here. So when the judge asks to see profile, that's what they want to see. Um, when you're in juniors, or even for those who want to have a professional look, you'd want to wrap up the leash and hold it in your hand the whole time while you're uh, stacking the dog. Um, a lot of people just let it drop on the ground here, which is also an option. Um, not going to lie, I do do that most of the time just because it's easier, but for today I will keep it in my hand like I probably should. So first thing I'm going to do, uh, well the rule of thumb is to always stack the judge's side first, which is the left side of the dog, and you normally want to stack the front first followed by the rear. So when I'm stacking the left front foot, I'm going to use my left hand, so I'm going to reach over the dog, and I want to grab at the elbow here. Because I, re I grab the elbow because that's how I can have the most um, ability to turn the dog's foot if I need to turn it in or out. If I grab the dog down here, I really can't turn the dog's foot at all. So I'll grab at the elbow, and the place you want to place it is right uh, below the withers. So you want to have a straight line down to this uh, front foot. So after you place the left front foot, you're going to switch hands and place the right front foot. You want the toes to be facing forward and you want them right next to each other. So now I'll switch hands again and I'll move to the rear. Now when you do this, it's really important that you hold your right hand that's holding the collar very steady. If you let it drop, now the dog feels like they're loose, they'll probably move. So you want to make sure to hold this hands steady so that they don't move. So I'll stack the judge's side first, which is the left and the rear. And when I'm doing this, I'll grab at the top of the hawk. That way I can move it and turn it if I need to. And you want to make sure to place it so the hawk is straight up and down. It's really common to overstretch dogs, um, but that's not the way that they should probably be stacked. The hawk should be perpendicular to the ground. I'm not sure if I said that before. Um, then. Use the same hand to stack the other foot in the rear. Then when you're done, um, she looks like she's posting a little bit. I would have a bait here and I would try to pull her forward so that she's better up and over her front. Um, but that's pretty much it. So now I'll give you a better look at the front. Come here. Come here, you can move. <laughs> she's really good at holding still. <laughs> move you look back so you can see. All right. So when stacking the front, here I'm going to gather my lead again. I do have a video on how to do this. So I'm holding the leash here in my left hand when I walk up. Then I'm going to switch hands to stack the left side first. So I stack it where the toes are pointed straight. I don't want to have a bulldog look, so I do not want to turn the toes too far forward or in. That is not what we want. And we don't want easty westy either, which she doesn't even want to stand like that. But there's a little little bit of easty-westy. So when you're stacking them, 
make sure to put the toes forward. Um, another thing you might notice, when I am stacking the front, I'll tend to move this back and forth to lift the dog's weight off the foot that I'm trying to stack. So when I'm trying to stack the left one, I'll kind of pull the collar and make the dog lean a little bit to the right so that the weight is off the foot and it's easier for me to pick up. Same thing when I'm doing the right foot. I'll pull the dog a little bit to the left so that I can easily do that. So left foot, place, right foot, place. Um, so that is the front. Okay. And turn around and do your butt. So when you're stacking the rear, what I said before, it's really important to keep your right hand super solid so that the dog isn't tempted to move. So I'll just stack the front again real quick. So then moving on to the rear, you're going to do both, hand, uh, both feet with your left hand. And I grab at the top of the hawk, that way I can twist it if need be. Stack it parallel to the ground, straight up and down. Same with the other one. Now for bigger breeds or for dogs who tend to crouch, if you go back there, there is an option to go under the dog when stacking this foot. So I'm grabbing at the same place, but I'm going under the dog. Sometimes dogs um, don't like when you're back there fussing around, so they may crouch or try to sit. And that is an option to try to alleviate that. So one of the tricks that I actually try to do is to not stack every foot. Um, the dog should naturally place at least one foot where it's supposed to be. So before I even touch a foot or start stacking, I do a quick scan and see what I actually need to fix on the dog. And I always try to, when I'm walking into the area where the judge is going to examine, I always try to navigate the dog so that the right front foot is where it should be. The reason why I try to target this foot, step. <laughs> Come here. <clears throat> So the reason I tried to target this foot is because that is the only foot that you will touch with your right hand. So if I don't have to touch that foot at all, I will never have to switch hands. And that will take, take out a lot of time when you're trying to stack. So that foot looks like it's placed where it should be, so I'm just going to go straight to the left front and bring that one up to place it equal to the other foot that I didn't touch. Now I do notice that this is technically too far forward. So I'm going to take a mental note when I'm stacking the rear that she needs to be pulled forward when I bring the bait out. Now her rear foot over here seemed to be in pretty good shape also. But here's where I would take some bait out and try to pull her forward because she's posting or she's leaning back too much. Come here. But if you can eliminate touching all four feet, come here. Come on. She's like, what am I doing? If you can eliminate touching all four feet, it'll save a lot of time in the, in the stack. And that's about it.